Hi everyone, this is Dave from geekanoids.co.uk and today I'm going to be bringing you a review of the Epson Stylus Photo R2880 Large Format Inkjet Printer. Do you fancy wearing a cool new t-shirt? One that shows people how you dig technology and computers? Check out chilltees.co.uk So this is the printer itself, as you can see it's quite a large printer it measures just over 60 centimeters in width. Um, now it sounds quite big, but it is able to accommodate 13 inch wide paper, so it can print on A3 plus or oversized A3 paper. You get with the printer a little starting pack here with uh, some warranty information and some driver discs. You also get a full set of cartridges. Now before I show you the inside of the printer with the cartridge installed. I just want to let you know that this uses Epson's Ultra Chrome K3 inks, they're pigment inks rather than dye based, so it gives you a lot longer uh, lastability of the prints. Uh, now, one thing you have to decide when you're setting up the printer is whether you're going to be printing on glossy paper or matte paper. It comes with two different types of black, a photo black this one here and a matte black and you have to swap out these cartridges depending on what type of media you're printing onto. You also get a quick start guide which uh, talks you through installing the drivers and setting up the printer itself, very self-explanatory and you also get a carrier tray for uh, putting in a CD you also get an attachment for the back, which you can see here, which is for loading fine art paper. And there is also another paper path uh, on the front of the printer here, which you use for thicker media, such as um, sort of a, a very sort of thick card type media, up to 1.2 millimeters thick. So you can use some art board in here as well. So that's very useful. There's also, I won't show you this, but you do get a roll attachment which you can put onto the back of the printer and that allows you to use roll media as well. So some, some very useful paper feeding options on this printer. I'm going to take a closer look inside now. I'm just going to run through these buttons along this top panel here. Obviously the power button on the left side. This is followed by a paper jam button for ejecting jammed media. This next one along, which I'll show you again in a short while, is for the ink management. And this last one here is for loading roll type paper into the printer. If I lift this front cover up, it's a nice smooth action. And now you can see the inside of the printer here, where all the workings go. If I just move around to the right slightly, I'm going to push this ink management button. And here is the print head zooming across, and then you will see where the ink cartridges are. If I pull this down, that reveals all of the ink cartridges. And you've got the normal cyan and yellow in there, but that's about as far as this printer goes in uh, sort of regular inkjet states because you have a vivid magenta instead of a normal magenta. And you also have a vivid light magenta here as well. As well as the standard cyan, there's a light cyan and then you get three different blacks. You get a light black, a light light black, and a photo black. This photo black is what I mentioned earlier. If you're printing onto matte media and you want to give your prints some real detail in the shadows, you can swap that out for a matte black cartridge. Be warned, this does spend some of the ink, so you will waste a little bit of ink every time you swap out. So it's best not to do this too often. Now I'm gonna show you the prints in use now. And I just wanted to show you the tray mechanisms. There is a, a feeder at the back here for fine art paper. And um, this is slightly different to a normal uh, loading mechanism in the fact that you put the paper in here and you have to hold it in place for three seconds. And then the R2880 takes the paper into the printer, actually loads it, uh, and you have to check inside this flap here to check that it's aligned properly once loaded the printer prints in the normal manner. If you're using regular paper, such as the uh, premium glossy photo paper that I'm going to be using now, you use the standard feeder, 
and you drop this front flap down here. Now the front flap also extends and I'll just quickly show you that so that it will accommodate quite a large sheet of paper coming out of the, the printer there so that's fully extended and it's also worth noting that this front uh, sorry this rear um, paper guide also extends up like so so it supports the paper fully when it's in the printer so I'm going to pop a sheet of paper in there as I say this is Epson's own premium glossy photo paper this is an A3 sheet which measure, measures 420 millimeters by 297 it will also print oversize A3 which measures 329 millimeters in width and 483 millimeters in length you can print longer than 483 you're restricted to 329 millimeters on the width but you can print a long banner type print if you so wish now because I'm using Epson's own media on this printer at the moment I let the printer manage the colour output you can use third party papers such as those from Innova or Harnmule and they do supply their own ICC profiles to match their papers now if you're using a third party paper which I will do in my later tests then you can allow Photoshop to manage the colours as opposed to letting the printer do the management well, the R2880 is coming to the end of this particular print as you can see the colours are absolutely fantastic very very accurate to the original photo it's taken just over seven minutes to print this A3 print now it's not the fastest but in all fairness to the printer I did set it to a standard speed when I selected my various printer options now it will produce an A3 print slightly quicker around about five and a half six minutes but I find that I'm not in a particular hurry a lot of the time and I'd rather have a better quality rather than a fast print now a couple of things I forgot to mention about the R2880 at the beginning of my review there is a picked bridge port on the bottom left hand corner of the printer it's a funny thing to have on a larger format printer but it does allow you to connect direct to digital cameras that support picked bridge around the back of the printer it's also worth mentioning that there are two USB ports now I find this very very useful I can have one connected directly to my desktop Mac the second USB port if you have a wireless router that supports USB connections you could plug it into that and then you'd have wireless access to the R2880 as well and I'm just going to give you a look at this print very very nice colours and I would say that that is a print that anyone can be proud of well, that was my review of the Epson R2880 this printer has a recommended retail price of £665 but you can pick it up for just under £500 now I think that represents great value for money you can print on a wide variety of media including roll type paper and the results are just stunning I've been so impressed with the colour accuracy. Printing on fine art media in black and white also reveals superb levels of detail, something I didn't expect you would be able to achieve at this price point. Now over the next few weeks I'm going to be looking at some other manufacturers papers to see what results can be achieved with those. I'm going to be printing on fine art media as well as doing some canvas prints as well. I'm going to be taking this right through to the mounting, framing and even doing some wraparound prints for you to see on stretcher bars. So please do keep checking back on the Geekanoids website. Thanks very much for listening. This has been Dave from geekanoids.co.uk. This video review is sponsored by Academy Class, the UK's premier creative IT training centre, authorised by Adobe, Apple and Autodesk.